Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you again to another episode of the uh, Scripture Twisting 101. And as uh, we've been mentioning to you, every video deals with one specific scripture that is taken out of context. And we've been focusing on those ones that our Muslim friends have been uh, basically doing, uh, committing, you know, fallacies, eis eisegesis, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just being basically utilized in a way uh, that butchers the scripture and doesn't really deliver the real message behind uh, the scripture itself. And hopefully these videos will help you and help those who are really truly seeking uh, begin to understand that you're being misled or at least you're trying to mislead somebody when you use it the way you are trying to use it. Here is another one of those. It comes from uh, the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 7, 25. And this uh, uh, passage reads as follows. Now, concerning the betrothed, I have no command from the Lord, but I give my judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. This is Paul mm -hmm. speaking. Yes. And I can tell you right away, you know, the argument is, see, even Paul says that he's given his own opinion. Precisely. That's one of the yeah. arguments to try mm -hmm. to undermine that the Bible is completely an inspired, <clears throat> inerrant word of God. So here, could Paul be any clearer? And he does that also a little earlier. In 1 Corinthians 7, 10 to 12, just to make the contrast clear, 1 Corinthians 7, 10 to 12, he says, Now to the married, I command, not I, but the Lord. So this commands from the Lord. Do not let the wife depart from her husband. Now notice 12, though, the difference. To the rest, I speak, not the Lord. See? The Lord gave this command, but here now, I'm speaking, it's not the Lord. Could Paul be any clearer that not everything he wrote was by inspiration of the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> well, how do we address that if we believe the Bible is completely the inspired <clears throat> And the word of God. Well, very simply, Paul is not saying that he's not inspired to comment on these issues. He's drawing a contrast between what Jesus taught in his earthly ministry to what Paul is now addressing during the time of the writing of the letter to the Corinthians. Scholars date Corinthians around 55 AD approximately, so about 20 plus years after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So certain issues arose in the church that our Lord did not address while on earth. And this is why Paul is making that contrast. He's saying, now these issues the Lord did not address on earth. So now let's reread that statement to see if Paul is saying, I'm commenting in regards to an issue that the Lord didn't address, so I'm just giving my opinion. It's not inspired. It's fallible. Take it or leave it. Is that what he's saying? Let's read. Let's read carefully the context. 1 Corinthians 7, 25, one more time. Now concerning virgins, I have no command from the Lord, Yet I will give my judgment as one who has obtained mercy from the Lord to be faithful. Right there, he gives it away. And the context is about whether virgins should marry or not, because the Corinthians were finding themselves in a situation in which there was a crisis on the horizon, tribulation. So they're wondering, Paul, in light of the tribulation that we're going to experience, maybe our children will be killed, husbands martyred, wives, you know, <clears throat> taken captive. Should we remain single or should we get married? And then he says, I suppose, therefore, that this is good because of the present distress crisis, that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you committed to wife? Do not seek to be uncommitted. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, they will have trouble in this life, but I would spare you that. Jesus never addressed this issue during his earthly ministry. So Paul as a spokesperson of the risen Christ, as a faithful servant of the risen Christ, as an apostle who's obtained mercy from the Lord, can now address these issues authoritatively by the Spirit of Christ. So it's not that he's not insp inspired. He has nothing from Jesus' earthly ministry, teachings of the historical Jesus when he's on earth, to address this issue. So now he speaks by inspiration. To further confirm that's the point, let's go to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 40. Notice what he says. And Paul at times is often sarcastic with, <clears throat> with the people you write. So if someone doesn't understand the context of this verse, they're thinking that Paul may doubt whether he has the Spirit. Do I really have the Spirit? Don't, don't I? Because the way he writes it. You can't even understand Paul's writings if you don't understand sarcasm. He's right, one of the most yeah. sarcastic writers ever. Exactly. Yeah. But I thought sarcasm is yeah, not it's biblical, it's anti-Christian, yeah. Right? What's wrong with you, man? So 1 Corinthians 7, 40. But in my judgment, it's not about the widow. She is happier if, she's, if she so remains as she is. And I think that I have the Spirit of God. Is Paul saying, duh, do I or don't I? To prove that's not what he's saying, that he's doubtful whether he has a spirit, but he's being sarcastic, because he's writing to a bunch of Christians at Corinth who thought they were super spiritual. 
that they were so spiritual and gifted that they are above everybody else. So he's trying to bring them down to size. To prove that he knows he speaks by the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 2.13, notice what Paul says, same letter. These things also we proclaim, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, mm -hmm. but which the Holy Spirit teaches, Amen. comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So he's already told you that the wisdom I'm sharing with you Comes wasn't taught Spirit. to me by human men based on human wisdom. It was taught to me by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why later on in the same epistle he says in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, 38, if anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that what I'm writing to you is a command of the Lord, but if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. Now, a few more references to solidify the fact that Paul knows he can speak on issues that Jesus honored didn't address and do so authoritatively because he's inspired by the risen Lord, by the Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 <clears throat> For this reason, we thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, Paul included, you received it not as the word of men, but as it truly is, the word of God, which effectively works also in you who believe. Then again, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 and 2. I'll skip to 2 for the sake of time. For you know what commands, plural, we gave you in the past through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. See, Christ inspired me to issue commands, even on issues he didn't address while he's on earth, commands you must follow or the Lord will ignore you, which is why he warns that same chapter, 1 Thessalonians 4, 8, therefore he that despises, meaning what he wrote here, does not despise man, but God. See, if you despise what I just said, it's not me you're despising. It is God who you're despising, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. I mean, could Paul be any clearer that he knows that he's inspired by the Spirit, and the commands he issues, even the suggestions, because sometimes the Lord doesn't give you a command. He gives you a choice. You can do this, or you can do this. Now, it's preferable you do this, but you don't have to. You can find that with the Lord in Matthew 19, 10 to 12. When they're talking about whether should, they should get married or not, Jesus himself said, some were born eunuchs, some were made eunuchs, and some make themselves eunuch for the sake of the kingdom. Who has ears, let him hear. So he's saying, look, you can make yourself celibate for the sake of the kingdom, but it's not a command. So not everything from the Lord has to be a command. It can be a suggestion. Here's two paths. Both are acceptable. This is more preferable if you do it, but if you don't, you're not sinning. So Paul is not saying he's not inspired. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 13, 3, he even tells the Corinthians, you seek proof that the Lord Jesus speaks through me, and then he supplies the proof. So this is a gross distortion of what Paul meant in the context of the chapter and the book as a whole. Clearly, this verse does not show that Paul thought he was merely giving his uninspired, fallible opinions. So. Amen. Amen. Well, David, do you have anything else to want to add to this? Uh, just uh, if people were, are interested in, in, in more on the Apostle Paul, I, I have an entire series called Paul versus Muhammad. If people yeah, want to uh, check Very that good. out, um, they, can, they can look at that. But other than that, I mean, it, it's pretty clear to, to anyone who's actually read uh, Paul what, yeah. what, what's going on here. And just, you know, I'm, I'm, we're not going to dive into this right now, but uh, to, many of my Muslim friends might be surprised to know uh, that actually Paul was referred to indirectly in the commentaries of the Quran. I think it's chapter 61, 14. And He's mentioned another, there, exactly, another in the commentaries also, on that verse. commentaries, exactly. And 36, 13 down, exactly. the three uh, apostles, right. according to Ibn Kathir, yeah. the Salaf said that one of those three was Paul. I, yeah, I mean, I mean these are the scholars of Islam that were so close to the actions, you know, and they have no problem basically mentioning this. But here's the funny part. The Prophet of Islam himself belligerized basically Paul when he says, describe in heaven, oh, yeah, he no eye have seen, no ear have heard, and uh, did not occur or, uh, you know, basically uh, come to the heart of ma man. That's what Paul says actually in the same letter. Yeah, yeah. First Isn't that amazing? 2, verse 9. Yeah. And that citation is only found in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. And yet in Bukhari, Muhammad says, Allah said that. That's right. So the words of Paul are said to be the words of Allah. So either Paul is Allah in the flesh or Paul is an inspired emissary of Allah. And yet again, our Muslim friends... They drive themselves into trouble with these two guys and myself. So thank you for giving us a full-time job. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash Sierra International.